Good morning. Um, happy Friday. This is uh, Fridays with Father, and it's uh, July uh, 9th, uh, 2021. I'm here with Jonah, and as you can see today, I'm not in my office. Uh, I'm actually in uh, what we call the, the chapel of the Cane Center, or some people call it the House Chapel, or, but the chapel where, um, where Mass uh, was celebrated before uh, the pandemic struck. And, um, you know, I've been here in this parish just for over a year, and um, this is the place really where I've been, uh, if you like, doing my personal prayers um, since my arrival, uh, and I find it a place of great uh, comfort and consolation. And um, I'm here today, really, I suppose, to talk to you about prayer, personal prayer. Um, we can divide prayer into many different categories, but you know, there's one prayer which is public and it's communal, and we call that liturgy, and that's the sacraments of the Mass, etc. Uh, and then, then we have uh, sort of personal prayer, you know, and the prayer that we make as individuals, um, and more commonly that's called a prayer life, you know, our own personal prayer life. And, and so, you know, for the last year I've had the... Uh, the fortune, you like, or, or the, the blessing, and have been able to uh, spend time, you know, in this little chapel here um, before Jesus, uh, uh, present in the Blessed Sacrament, and just spending time with him. And, um, and it's a great privilege. And I, I just wanted to speak to you briefly about prayer today and about this little place uh, called the Cain Center Chapel. Um, I think probably prayer or personal prayer is probably the, one of the most powerful things at our disposal in life, um, the most powerful thing of all, and yet it doesn't cost any money. <laughs> you know, it doesn't cost any money, it just costs a little bit of us, a little bit of our time and a little bit of our heart um, to make it happen. And yet, you know, we all struggle with it, and in, it, it, we make in some ways a, a big deal of it, um, and we make all sorts of excuses for not praying, or not praying enough, or not praying deeply enough, or not being grateful enough, or all those different things. Um, you know, we, we, we struggle with prayer, um, and, and I think that um, the important thing to take from this is that, you know, in some ways, it doesn't cost anything from us um, other than just a little bit of time and a little bit of our heart, really, uh, in order to have like the most powerful, you know, weapon, commodity, um, richness, you know, in our life. Um, so what I wanted to say to you about prayer today is that, you know, um, we, the more effort we make to pray, um, you know, the more we want to pray. It kind of like self-perpetuates itself. So if I give a little bit of time to Jesus in prayer each day, um, that gives me the desire to do it more, you know. Um, so what it means is that if, if we have no desire to pray, it means we haven't done any praying. <laughs> but if we do, however small, try and reach out to Jesus in our prayer life, um, however small, what that gives us initially is a desire to pray mass, uh, pray more, you know. Um, I, and I'm not talking about the quality of the prayer, I'm just talking about the, the desire inside each one of us to connect and, and to be in the presence of God. Um, so th that's the one thing I would say. So um, whatever small effort you make, tiny effort you make, it will be initially repaid with a desire in your heart uh, to reach out a bit more. And that's a good thing. The second thing I wanted to say about, you know, personal prayer is that um, one of the, say the reasons why or the excuses that we make for, for not praying or not praying enough is we say that we don't have time uh, because we're so busy. Uh, and we are busy. You know, our lives seem to be busier than ever, and, and time goes fast, and life passes by fast. Uh, there's always stuff to do, and there's always a list of things that you need to do. And so it, it's easy for us just to, like, blow off um, prayer, or easy to, to get into the habit of not praying because we just don't have the time to do it. You know, we just don't have the time. 
Um, but my take on this, and I, I can only speak of my own experience of prayer time and my prayer life, is that, you know, um, if we start our day well um, in prayer and we have that little bit of time with Jesus first, then we have all the time that we need to do everything else and even a little bit more. What I found is that, you know, if I start my day off right with a bit of prayer time, you know, putting Jesus first before everything else I do, you know, and then it sets me up well for the rest of the day so that not only do I do all the things that I have to do, I have a little bit of time left over. And that is usually like a bit of me time, you know. So, um, what I wanted to say about t a prayer, which I found, and um, it may sound a bit hokey to you, and I don't intend it to sound hokey or, you know, or a bit crazy, but um, I think that prayer actually stretches time, stretches time. Um, you know, and I, I'm not talking about magic <laughs> or sci-fi or anything like that, but I just think that, um, that prayer brings a calmness to our soul so that um, we are able to achieve more, do more, and get stressed less. So that it, it gives us the appearance that in our day, that we've, we're not rushed, um, we're not under pressure, and that we actually have more time than we thought that we had. I just offer you that. It's just my own personal experience. I've never read it anywhere, but I, I, I really do believe, at least for me anyway, you know, um, is that prayer stretches time. Okay. Um, and I know that when I haven't started my day well, when I haven't made an effort in some ways to, to be with Jesus, um, you know, then, then things kind of like quickly fall apart and I'm rushing, and I'm stressed, and then I get in a bad mood, and um, I take it out on other people. So I offer you that as my reflection on personal prayer today um, for you to go thinking about it. Um, I, as I make no uh, uh, sort of apologies about talking about prayer, and, and I will be talking more and more about it because I think it's important for the reasons that I said, that it's the most, probably the most powerful tool we have in our life at our disposal, you know, and it doesn't cost us anything except a little bit of time, a little bit of us, you know, to get so much back in return. And, you know, and I, and I invite you, you know, as the people of Church of the Holy Spirit who are already at prayer, because I've seen that uh, in evidence, but to pray more, you know, and to invest more in your, your prayer life and develop it more and you know, make that extra special effort to be with the one who loves you most. Uh, and if we all start doing that individually, um, the, the fruits and the benefits uh, become great, not just for us, but for the whole community and our parish and beyond. It's the graces spill out. So I invite you to pray. Uh, and for that very reason, that's why I'm sat in this chapel today. Um, it has not been in use uh, since uh, the pandemic hit, um, when the daily mass uh, was moved uh, back last June uh, to the worship space. And that's where it's been ever since. And, um, and that's where we will remain uh, celebrating the daily mass here uh, in public in, in the appropriate space, which is the worship space. And we'll have daily mass as usual. Um, which brings up the question, well, what about this space? What about this little chapel? Is this just, you know, Father Jeremy's, you know, private little chapel, which, <laughs> which in some ways this past year it has been, and I'm, you know, uh, and I love it. It's a great little thing, um, but I'm not just keeping it for me. And, and that's what I wanted to mention today, because beginning this coming Monday, um, that's Monday the 12th, of July, um, during office hours, you know, every day during office hours, this little chapel will be open uh, to the public for people to come and to spend time in individual 
private silent prayer. Um, it's a small chapel and at the moment there are only chairs for four people and that's how it will remain. It is intended to be in some ways a little refuge for us all where we can come and just pay a visit to Jesus, spend that little bit of time in personal prayer with him and then get up and continue with our lives. And, and I saw I wanted to talk to you about that today uh, to make sure you know that this space is here at your disposal uh, in your parish. Um, the, the chapel in the Kane Centre will be open as of Monday um, from, you know, the, whenever the office opens at nine o'clock through till when it closes, which is 7 p.m. And you can just come in here and make a prayer and spend some time in silence and, you know, uh, in, engage uh, with your God who is waiting for you here. Um, so I, I just, you know, wanted to mention that to you today and to explain to you the reason why I'm here. Um, this little space, which is a lovely space, uh, we have the Blessed Sacrament reserved in the tabernacle, which is behind me, and we have a nice crucifix on the wall, and we have a nice picture of Our Lady of Guadalupe. Um, but apart from that, it's just a very quiet, calm, and uh, plain kind of place. But Jesus is present, and his invitation is for you to come, and we invite you to invest a bit of time in your prayer life as we now move through the summer months. You know, it, you might have a bit of spare time during the day or you might be on your way to do some shopping and you're passing by. You could just stop by, um, stop in and uh, make a, a small prayer. Just, you know, be with your God and then continue with the rest of the day. And so your time in the day will stretch and you will see the benefits of it in your life. Um, as I say, there's, you know, the most powerful thing of all in the world is prayer. And there's obviously a lot of it that goes on, you know, um, in the world. Um, I know we think the world is in bad shape, you know, there's a lot of needs, but imagine if people weren't praying. Imagine if all those enclosed orders of monks and nuns um, didn't exist. Imagine if there was no celebration of mass. Imagine what state the world would be in, you know. Imagine if, you know, you stopped praying, if we all stopped praying and just gave it up, how the world would quite quickly sort of descend into darkness. Whereas, you know, in some ways, every time that we pray, every time mass is celebrated, every time the church gathers in prayer, you know, that little flame of faith, you know, uh, which tells us that Jesus is here, it, it, get, it burns brighter, you know, it burns brighter and it dispels uh, the darkness around us, you know, and, and that's why Jesus rose from the dead uh, to be the light here in the world. Uh, and that light is here for us to, to share. And so part of our job <coughs> as committed members of the church is to make sure the, the flame continues to burn brightly in our lives. And I hope that uh, we continue to do that. And I invite you to do it uh, with even greater fervor uh, in the weeks and months ahead. Um, so as of Monday, you know, uh, here at Church of the Holy Spirit, uh, we will have our one space, which is for worship in our church building uh, where we celebrate mass and public sacraments and that's for communal prayer and we will have uh, this little chapel here in the Kane Center for our private personal and individual prayer um, and I just want to mention about that is that this won't be a place where you'll come and find people praying the rosary out loud if people want to do that um, uh, in silence and they can but this is not a place for group prayer this is a place where you can come individually and just be, be there you and Jesus and uh, and to do so and enjoy and enjoy the moment okay so here at the Kane Center Chapel you can come as of Monday uh, when the office opens okay well that's about it for now um, I'll be seeing you at the weekend um, I hope you continue to pray for me as I pray for you in the meantime, be joyful and keep the faith. Bye-bye.